Try to overlook a rival. All eyes on me cause I got no competition. Now looking at an idol. You're doing long enough to pay for my attention. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, today we got a special surprise for you guys. We got the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. G, man. Dr. G smiles, man. And hey, we gonna check out my boy today. He a friend of Real Lifestyle. About to be your friend, too. Let's ride. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, today we got a special, special, special guest, man. Hey, uh, I think Dr. G is supposed to be in the cover of GQ magazine, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you dressing sharp, man. What's up, guys? How are you? It's a pleasure having you here. You have a strong collection here of cars, man. Like, yeah, after a yeah. few years and uh, making the right decisions, one can say that when you make financial decisions, go along with your investment portfolios of different markets, and you have a passion for your profession, you can accommodate toys and gifts. Yeah. It's kind of like a reward after you put in the time in doing the right things. Yeah, I, I could say, I'm gonna get right into it. <laughs> man, what got you to doing teeth, man? Like, <laughs> you know, it's funny. You know, you, you drove here and I was with one of my friends, she's a professional car driver and we were just joking around with go-karts outside. And I have my tie, I'm outside with the tie, just, you know, playing around with the go-karts. But truth of the matter is that I was gonna be an architect, you know, just like you were doing you know, home and everything else. I yeah. used to do that with my family investments. And uh, I, truthfully, I did not like dentistry at all. I was terrified of dentistry, which is, you know, something that most people have. Fear to dentistry is nothing else but the accumulation of probably a bad experience, um, a bad pediatric experience, a bad dentist that, that did something that scared you away. And then unfortunately, most parents don't realize that by saying, if you don't behave good, I'm gonna take you to a dentist. If you don't behave good, I'm gonna pull your tooth, I'm gonna give you a shot. That's terrifying. Yeah. But when I was 14, um, which is a blessing, my mother's uncle, he pulled my wisdom teeth out. And I felt nothing. It was just kind of like reborn, you know, born again. And I said to him, you know, I'm good in science. I see how my family helps a lot of people. Can I just come to see what's up? And I started going to his office back in Colombia and uh, he was my motivation. He's the only dentist besides me in the family, and he's 101 years old today, still walking. 101. 101. Wow. So he, you know, I said like, you and know, he got some wisdom. <laughs> and he's got some wisdom, as, yeah. and I said to him, his chairs and manner were amazing, his techniques amazing, and um, you know, in life you need a coach. And most people don't understand that besides the believing in the principle of family and values and ties and believing in God's, not let's say, guidance. You have to have somebody that inspires you so you can follow their steps and see how you get to their level until you discover yourself and do what you need to do and then you end up doing what you love to do and that's how you balance life by doing right in the needs and wants right, right. so yeah that's the story of dr g wow. how about that huh wow so you got into dentistry by your uncle just yanking your teeth. as a matter of fact no i went to dentistry because i i i i felt that he made a change in my life and in our family, we've always been very giving. We support a lot of uh, families that have, you know, financial situations. And we have a, we had a school before uh, that we supported over 200 students. Now we have him, some of them in, are in high school, some of them are in the university, and we still support him. And that's been our family, always giving, you know? Yeah. Um, Dennis, it just happens to be something that I love. And then, you know, what do I design? Smiles. I could have been designing homes and buildings and everything else. Yeah, like so it's kind of like a little combination. I st I'm still in real estate. Okay. I don't develop anything. I don't put a screw. I don't, I don't want to hurt my hands. <laughs> right. I don't change light bulbs. But yeah. again, I'm still within the same. Hey, that's a good combination to be an architect. You know, you're doing architecture work and now you're doing, you design a small, it, it kind of the same thing. It kind of correlates. It's similar. With like, it, you're looking at forces, vectors. You're looking at the ability to be able to support symmetry with art and then the function. Mm -hmm. And all that has to do with same with the cars because the cars you have to have support, you have to have a balance, you have to have a parallelism, alignment, and then you have to have the right team surrounding you. Right. So everything is just different gloves. That's right. the way I see it. I'm doing artistry, I am very passionate about it. My team, the one that works with me, they just kind of like flow within my same momentum all the time and we kind of like inspire each other all the time. 
Yeah, I, f- I feel your I feel your, your passion, especially like uh, you know everybody talks about the Dr. G smile, like you yeah. know that that's, it's like that stamp of approval. Like the fact is that more than the stamp of approval, it's probably like a lifestyle, mm-hmm. where I'm gonna just go and do your teeth. I want to see what you do, who you are, how can I contribute to the wellness of your person. Then we go into the nutrition, your energy levels, your sleeping levels, your exercising. Everything has to be balanced. I mean, when you go to the streams, extremes normally kind of like puts away other stuff. It's like a typical question that I was asked one time, like, Dr. G, if you were to know the future, would you like to know your future? And I said, no, I don't care about my future. I care about my right now happiness and wellness that if I know that every day I do something right, I'm gonna be adding up value to my life. When I get to whatever the destiny is gonna be, it's, it's, it's just gonna get fantastic. I don't need to know because otherwise, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm a tunnel vision guy. Yeah. I want it to be done there now. Right, right. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna lose all the other experiences that God puts on on my life. So that's really like you know con- con- convicting, like to to know that that's behind the story. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, because for myself, I used to have like I used to be afraid of my teeth. You know, like because you know back then, we you know we didn't go to the dentist and stuff like that. Like back in the day. Nah. You know, so it's not until I got braces uh, from Dr. Amira, um, and you know for a year and a half, then I was able to like, okay, I could smile now, you know, cause- I look good. I, yeah, I look good. <laughs> like I look all right, you know? You the know, confidence. You, you smile You smile for the ladies, you smile for yourself. And so it's, it's, it's something that's like, uh, you're not just like putting a smile on people's face, like you're giving them confidence, like they can We're go- We're giving them purpose. You know? Yeah, right. Self-assurance. Right. Um, giving them the ability to say, I am caring for myself more than what I used to care for. I mean, you have people that they have different values in life, but look, look about it, look, you speak, you gotta use your mouth, your teeth. When you eat, when you swallow saliva, when you're drinking, the first thing you look at a person, it's at the presentation time, it's their smile. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we may say that maybe we're looking at all the values surrounding the ladies and stuff, <laughs> but you look at their teeth, Yeah. you know? I mean, they have to have a balance, the face, the eyes, the lips, and the whole purpose of life. Right. But the smile, bro. The smile. Is don't everything. forget that you got to do your teeth before your boobs. That's a key. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then comes the, the everything else that you want to do. It's it's just it's got to be symmetrical. Right. So what's what's been your your to date? What's been your most you know transformation that's been like you know what yo I I really did that like it changes person life. You know it's been twenty five years of doing dentistry and I'm yet to say that every day it's it's a new life transformation because sometimes it's not just making a beautiful smile, changing the bite. Sometimes it's just taking the patient's face out of their mouth, I mean, the mouth out of their face. Mm. Like they do like this, take the hands off. These hands off, when you're talking, it's a major impact, regardless of the age. I mean, I have teenagers, 12, 13 years old with like badly stained teeth. Then we have the 20 to 30, and then we have older people that they're missing teeth. There's people that have had accidents where the husband didn't know that they had a removable appliance in their mouth and you put the implants and you do their smile, all of a sudden it's a different, I said, let's just throw this in the river. Wow. You know, so every day is a different connection. We've got people like, I'm gonna say a name, Howard. We did their smile, Howard, about 10 years ago, and I said, Howard, you're such a good looking man, you're wealthy. I mean, you don't need to worry about anything else in life, but how about if we were to just let you know that you could improve your life, you wanna live longer, we gotta lose weight. Forget about looking better, but your heart, your lungs, and, and, and everything else that is coming along with your ability to recuperate from any injury comes with having proper weight balance. So a few years later, I didn't see Howard. Mm-hmm. I thought I lost him, but he kept coming to my office. I have a few doctors that work for me. Yeah. All of a sudden, about a month ago, Howard comes to the office and Howard had lost like 70 pounds. I'm like, is that Howard? Because the voice is like, you can't recognize Howard from a mile just by listening to his voice. I said, that's Howard. <laughs> And then when I went around the, 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 um, the cubicles, I'm like, you know, I used a specific phrase. Yeah. And we were all laughing about it and says, this is Dr. G. Well, you told me, you were not insulting me. You were telling me a life-changing moment. You told me that I could live longer if I were to just control my weight. And I've been biking and running every day since the last few years that you told me that. Now, that's fantastic. Then you have the patient that have had cancer that we kind of like, co-diagnosed, we refer to the right sources, we save life, 
uh, just by doing the full medical blood work and everything else, we discovered people that have had insufficient of vitamins, minerals, um, young people with low hormones, and then they don't sleep well. They don't have good stamina. They don't feel good about themselves. It's just because the hormones are imbalanced. So it goes beyond, it just goes so much farther than just teeth, you know? I respect that. Like, just hearing your story, like, I didn't know that you go in depth to, like, their weight, you know, uh, their overall health. Yeah. Because, you know, I've been to, like, a, over a thousand, like, dentistries, like, and it's all about teeth. You know, that's it. They don't care about, like, what do you do? Like, are you exercising? Are you eating right? You know, things that issue. But you actually go in, like, you actually, like, change, you changing people's lives. It's know? something that it's within my team's mindset that the teeth is the, ra the last of the results that we're going to give you. We're going to make sure that you're emotionally right, that you're fully functional, that you are in a lifestyle that is contributing to wellness. And if we see the opposite, we are going to give you suggestions. We don't get involved into telling you how you have to live your life because nobody can walk their shoes, but we can accompany them over time to improve their lifestyle. And then they see, and I, I write a lot of stuff on my social media and I use my channels to communicate what I actually do on my daily basis for myself and my children. So whatever they hear and see me, it, that's the real person. It's not an actor, it's not a facade. This is exactly how you get. And when you talk to me, that is exactly, and then sometimes I have interviews, even with my team, and they're like, oh, shh. we ask you the same question with different type of like, you know, looking for like side answers, and they're the same answers. Yeah. Core values are very well set within myself. And that's the family legacy. My parents are the same. We have a very tight family and our core values are, are solid. So we, we're, we're pretty good anchor. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you stand that with your children and, and your team. I, I use my core values as a form of daily communication and I project what I see best of you. I'm not going to be rubbing on you know, what you don't do right all the time. I'm going to try to get the best out of you. And if I see yeah, you're better than what you're doing right now, I'm going to be on your case until I see you getting better. I mean, my team know it. I don't expect least from you that I don't actually perform myself. If I cannot outperform myself every day, I'm not growing or becoming more efficient. Right. You know, and, and, and I would actually demand, I'm very demanding myself that people can get better. They just have to have a will. They want to want, they, you have to be hungry for self-improvement every day. And they'd be grateful at nighttime when you, whatever you do. Where that hunger come from? What do you mean? That you got that, you got that inner hunger in you. It's like. a competitiveness. I always competed in my life. I, in, in, in sports, academics, for business, everything. Second place is not good enough when you go to the podium, right? <laughs> yeah. Second place is not good enough. Second place is the one that need to learn how to get to that first place. That was always me. From being a little, I, used, I remember I used to race Bicycles since I was five years old, but I had to race with the eight and nine years old kids. You were racing bicycles. Yep. And I still have the trophies and everything that my mama kept. It's crazy, huh? Really? The medals. Actually, those medals, they don't even look old. They're so old. We're <laughs> going to keep the disclosure of time and uh, private, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. But in every competitive sport that I got involved to, I was always competing to win. I never, I never competed just to, to shadow somebody else. And I would not stop until I would get that podium. Transparently clean with efforts. You know, you talked about earlier off camera. We talked about sports. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Careful what you say. <laughs> right. Kidding? I know. <laughs> I'm kidding. You almost got me there. You hey, got hey, me. hey, hey, hey! You gotta be careful what right, we say off right. the camera. I no. learned that one time. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> no, off camera we talked about you know you playing sports and uh, yeah. you talked about you, you playing soccer and talked about like you know your injuries. Injuries. You know we had um, injuries as well. Um, you know, so that's something that we both share. Like. A career and an injury. Like, mm -hmm. can you talk about like yours? Like, tell anybody like, you know, because you, you you're supposed to be going pro. I should have been doing different sports. Literally speaking, pro. Uh, some people have talents, and some people work really hard about developing something that they maybe recognize as a talented individual in sports. I happen to work very hard, and I happen to have the blessings of being good at it, right? And you have to say a blessing because you need to also understand that there's a time for a call. Injuries are time for colds. And yeah, signs can heal faster while your body should naturally heal on its own. But if you're pushing signs and you're pushing your colds, you may have to then respond to higher colds, meaning long-term injuries, permanent injuries, 
that there's no need for that. Look, how long can an athlete last? 20, 30 years? If you're blessed and lucky? What are you going to do afterwards? You're going to be the coach with pain and painkillers and injections and chiropractors and more physical than, than anything else? No, I recognize that there's a limit for everything in life, and I just switched to another sport. And every time that there was a call, I was blessed enough to recognize it. I, and every time that you confronted your same evil, saying, oh, I can do this. I know I had an injury, but I'm going to confront it. You're going to get hurt again. Yeah. It is a fact. And, and, and I know that for the last 20 years that I've been doing more of the personal training and coaching and doing all the stuff that I like to do, I've had a few accidents, but nothing that I got to go back and say, I'm going to regret it 20 years from today. I know that I'm not going to have no pain medications, no injections, none of that, because I have learned to regulate my, my eagerness to I don't like pain. You don't I like told pain. you I hated the pain, <laughs> and I'm the science of healing pain. I mean, but that, that's a it, it goes against each other, you know. Like you it don't is. like pain, <laughs> it is. But still, you know. But you got you have to know when there's a limit. Yeah, but that's the thing, though. Um, I think that's it's inside of everybody. Like you don't know when to stop. Like you don't know when to say, you know what, you know, I'm done with this sport. Uh, my health is more important. Fact. You know, like it's it's hard to walk away from like 10 years, 20 years of playing a sport different sports and then trying to transition trying to find yourself you know uh you told me that I, you told me that you didn't sit out for a long time after you knew that you know what you couldn't play no more you got into the industry like well the thing is that once i knew that my knee had had surgery i needed to have another surgery if i wanted to continue doing competitive sports i transferred myself into other sports sports that didn't require immediate contact with other athletes like I went into cycling I've done cycling all my life so I went to mountain biking you know motocross yeah you got a couple of hits here and there you know trees falls <laughs> yeah nothing significant yeah. Um, racing go-karts racing a Porsche uh, the track and field I had to stop doing it because then track and field creates a lot of swelling for the knees so anything that you do in life always remember there's gonna be a time of limits and if you think that you're gonna be endless on it just look around and you're gonna see a lot of injuries I have the blessing of actually being a doctor, meeting so many people with so many complications, people that are younger than me, older than me, with you know radical surgeries, transplant surgeries, and stuff that if you're, if you're smart enough and you put blessings into some of the stuff like my own kids, I'd rather be able to run with my children than have to be other options. Right. My two older boys and myself, we're always surprising each other with different toys. Yeah. But we know that it's part of the safety box and we all have the keys and yeah, you just take whatever you want. Oh, that's good. But again, with anything that you have, it's sacrifice, it's the commitment for maintenance. You know, whether it'll be a bicycle or it'll be something that involves a little bit of a higher financial investment, you gotta take care of it. I have the same bicycle that I used to mountain bike back in the days so in college. You still have it? I still have it and it's, she's impeccable and, and I converted it to a, a daddy's bicycle. So I have six kids, right? And then my six kids have driven on that bicycle on the same chair that I keep perfectly. And uh, funny enough, I'm gonna be a grandpa now. So well, my granddaughter's gonna ride in the same bicycle as my kids. And you see the bicycle and you think it's brand new. Wow. That's the power of learning to keep up your stuff for the long term. Yeah, you really do. Like even your collection here, man, like everything here is like in mint condition. It's gotta be showroom ready. Right. My, 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 my clothes and my clothing, my nannies know that everything has to be organized because if I need to find something, it's always gotta be there. That doesn't make me predictably boring. That makes me easier to access my stuff. That's no just way. the way I was raised. I was raised by, 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 by a hardcore mama, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, people don't understand that you, father and mothers, they all have a role. I understand my role as that very well. But there's something about mothers that we the men need to learn a lot and that's that Mothers give a lot of love, but when mothers give love and discipline, you learn. The fathers, we give a lot of discipline and we give love, which is the opposite. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I learned to give a lot of love to my kids with hardcore discipline. My dad was flexing all the time. Yeah. My dad was the one with the toys, with the gift, with the, with the forgiving. And my mother was like, ah, 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 I told you 30 day timeout. 30 day means 30 days. She ain't playing. Ain't playing 28 days. I remember one time, uh, and this is for the youth and the, and, the, and the generations that believe that that timeout didn't work are motorcycles, right? So I, we have boundaries. So say that we had a two miles boundaries in a, in a, from our home. Yeah. And I went two miles and maybe a few, a few meters just to drop up one of my friends, a block of my boundary. 
um, you know, back in the days there was no camera, well, there was always somebody. Somebody watching. Yeah. Yeah. And my mother got a call, and I remember perfectly well. It was Friday, four o'clock, and I was gonna go on my motorcycle. I said, "No, you know what you did yesterday." I said, "No, mommy, what happened? You went off the boundary, and for this, you're gonna take your motorcycle off." 31 days. Day 28 came. It was another Friday, right? And I said, oh, you can take it out. It's good. It's already been a month. When my mother heard the motorcycle running the engine, she said, uh-uh, I told you until Monday. You will not remember the blessings of your dad being flexed, but you will never forget your mother being put in the limits on that. And that's what I do with my kids. And it's funny because I just gave my daughter a, a, a nice collectible car. And she said, oh, dad, so now it means that if I don't do good or if I don't behave, you cannot take my car away. I say, no, Sophie. You can, it's your car, it's titled to you, but I still pay for the insurance, so if I don't pay for the insurance, you can drive it. <laughs> she said, don't worry, Dad, I'm making money now, so I can pay for my own insurance. <laughs> so there's always gonna be a limit, whether it'll be physical, whether it'll be a guidance, mentorship, or I don't like to call it rules, but I like to use the word suggestion because today's generation, they don't like to be told upon. So I use suggestions as a method of communicating my kids how I feel, had it been me at their aging right now in their shoes. Because if I use parenting from when I was their age, it's totally different. Rules and guidance work, limits work, but today is a different story. And then the government puts more limitations and then they have so much diversity of opinions with the social media gurus and, and, and you know these diversified parental uh, gurus on the, on, on the market. Right. And they're trying to diversify your, your opinions and culture. And uh, never mind into the, going into the pronouns and all this stuff because it's just, it's another level. So how you navigate to that, to that with your kids? I'm like? a captain, I just got one course, I go straight, that's it. Oh. This is me, now you choose to go left or right, you know where the river travels best, the boat. This is how I do it. This is how I did it, now you gotta put yourself the captain hat and then you do it yourself. I give him flexibility. But there's a famous uh, statement that I always tell them. You gotta remember that you don't want me to say, I hate to tell you, but I told you so. You know, I learned late to listen to my parents. But my brother and I were always good kids. No drugs, very little alcohol, good parties, always athletes, always working hard from young. Um, my kids have learned that. But, you know, they need to find their own path of success and niche. and they. Each one of them, they're doing it very well so far. And then when, they're, when I see that they're kind of like doing something else that is outside of my comfort zone, and I said, look at the probable situations, look at the probable consequences. I am gonna learn with this one with you. I suggest that maybe this, this and that, but I would like not to say my statement, I said, I know that what you're gonna say. And then they, they, they kind of like take it, we learn together, or they go back into the course of action. But regardless of what they choose to be the path, I'm always gonna be with them, always. My parents always supported my decision making. Really? Yeah, that's important. Because when parents support what you love to do, they trust in you that you already have within yourself good core values. And you know, who as an adult doesn't wanna do something else every day? But then for that, you gotta work, you gotta have the choices, and the choices come with financial and time. And those are the two things that people don't fight for. Time management, and they're always struggling for financials. And then you have a lot of financials, and then you know what to do with it. Right. You gotta manage. I could tell your mom, she raised you right, man. <laughs> oh, my mama raised me right. I mean, <laughs> you, you can go right. and say, my mother is really good. And as a matter of fact, I mean, I'm one of the oldest cousins out of a lot of cousins. And my mother was always the one having all the kids. I mean, we grew up with at least 10, 15 of my cousins every weekend at our house. Sleepovers, breakfast, lunch, party, uh, playing sports, everything. You got a big family. We have a big family. On my mom's side, we were, they, they had nine brothers and sisters. One passed, actually two passed away now. And my dad is three. Wow. And those are like me, three and four and five kids per, 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 per head. Wow. Yeah. And then came the second cousins. And then the third cousins, yeah, we had like four or five generations now. Hey, that, that's a, you're, you're building like a, a big family tree. Like. Yeah, we are almost like a city within our family. Right. <laughs> you said something they call my mother the governor. <laughs> <laughs> but you said something that I, I caught what you said earlier. 
you said that it's you and was my your, brother your brother yeah okay. two of us two of you two of you guys he's got four kids and i got six wow so who's going to take the torch to be the next dentist out of your kids uh, this is a good one um as it is my kids asked me one time hey dad but how many years is dentist i said well i did it in seven most people do it in eight or nine years but we see that you you read and you study every day. I say, yeah, because when you're good at something, you're actually going to read and, and do something every day because you want to improve. You want to get into the latest every time. And that was sometimes you work like 8, 10 hours, 11 hours. Sometimes you go Saturdays and stuff. I say, I'm doing something that I love and I, and I, and I do very well. Hmm. High school, college, professional school, another 11, 12 years, to start making time. money at 30. People don't understand that money is not everything in life. I'm honored to say that my two older children and now my third daughter that just graduated from high school, they're doing very well early enough. They're literally doing their own, they're taking their own path into doing what they love to do. But whatever it is, they're set already because there's a lot of things that the family has that they don't need to worry, but they don't want that. They want their own. And that's a privilege to say as to that. It, it kind of like teased me a little bit because, you know, you would like to have your kids follow through with you and do what you do. Say, no, no, that, that's their dad. That, that, that you continue doing that. We're going to do our own thing. Wow. So the power of, of, of trusting your kids and their core values. Right. So you, you believe, you say you have six. So out of the, out of the six, two is going to be doing something else. You think out of the four, somebody's going to Well, so take. the third one is not into dentistry either. Right. She's into marketing brand. They say, Dad, I'll do the marketing for all the companies and stuff. Then comes the second generation that they're 13 and 12. They're like, Dad, well, whatever we're going to do, we're going to be doing with computers. I know what my brother does money with the, with, the, with, the, with the stock markets and my other brother does money with the stock market and the, and the, and the, and the real estate. And uh, we're going to be in that path. That we're going to be making money. We don't want to go 11 years of school. And uh, when we're 16, 17, we'll start working. And then the baby Miranda, she's only three years old. And, uh, you know, she's like, I don't know. <laughs> she don't know yet. <laughs> no, she's still little, but she's like, you know, we're playing, uh, the other day we were playing Play-Doh, and she had the little dentist kid, right? Yeah. And then uh, I asked Miranda, what are you doing? It's my design. She's always so small <laughs> design. She's put the veneers on the model and everything else. So, yeah, you don't know. You know, you never know. Yeah. And everything is robotic today at the office. So, whatever it is, I just want my kids to be, and I always tell them, I just want you to be happy, healthy, and you have to be financially responsible. But the first two are the most important ones. Nice. That's it. That's, that's what we learned from our parents. That's some real core cool values. Yeah. Right yeah. Yeah. Money with no health or happiness means nothing. So who taught you like the financial literacy of like managing everything? Like, you know, I know this stuff is like a big operation, you know, financially. So who taught you like financial? Like, My dad has always been a, a, a hard workaholic. Always. And my mother has been always a hard workaholic at home. And, and, and then you cannot take it away from either or. Right. The discipline of working hard with working smarter to also invest in. My dad used to um, also be an athlete. He used to race motorcycles, motocross. And I remember going to the track with my dad, and I was a little one, and he would race motocross. And we saw him win, and we saw him taking falls and getting up. He also used to race go-karts for the Colombian national team. Uh, uh, rallies out, out there. Yeah. So, I mean, working hard and, and traveling and working and working and, you know, and always going home and sharing time with us. So, in the scene of my dad example and my mother's core values, it just happened to be that we were good kids, blessed by the discipline, by the limits. So, financial management from my father and my uncles and everybody else, I mean, and I always, and that's what I, I tell my kids, your mentors are almost never going to be your age group. Your mentors are always going to be two, three generations later that they don't need anything from you, but they can give you a lot back because they've been there, done that, and they have probably fallen a few times. As a matter of fact, most of um, the kids, and I'm going to say the kids that come around uh, us, it's always somebody that mom is gone, dad is gone, mom and dad, they don't pay attention to them. They're good kids, they have good values, but they don't know where to go. And we just give them a little bit of mentorship and we follow up. It's like having extensions, you know? Right. And uh, by doing that, it just changes their life. My sons, they have online academies, and they have th changed thousands of people's lives by the, his mentorship programs. So every time that you're giving back, things come around within your family, whether it will be in health or in, the, in other blessings. Well, I could see that, like with your kids, like your son is not even 18 yet, right? 
Well, I have one that is going to be 24, the one that made me a grandpa. Right. The one is going to be 23. He was your grandpa. I told him, don't make me a grandpa again. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's their life. Right. And my daughter is going to be 18, but they're, they're solid kids. Yeah. They're, they're respected within the community. Um, you know, they're, they're well behaved. Mm. They're just loud on the cars, but it is what it is. <laughs> You got to live a little. Yeah, all the police <laughs> in the city, they love us. It's like, yeah, yeah, I saw your kid. I, what, you saw your home. Well, both. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's what it is. You know, right. you, Yeah, you just have to accept the fact that you're giving them the best, which is the leadership and the role. Role playing is important. Yeah. But also transparent communication. When I talk to my kids or their friends, I'm, I'm a straight shooter. I, I become a gangster if I have to. I'll do whatever I have to do yeah. until I get my message relayed. Yeah, in suggestions to. mode. And I have to course, I course. If I have to be extremely polite, extremely polite, but I got to take my, my, my shirt off and, and, and do the running and like flex. I do with them, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it takes until we blend in. Adults need to blend in. They need to learn. The communication is pretty different. Sometimes a little text message straight to the point is better than a one-hour communication. Mm. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. We used to have mom and dad lecture you for an hour, and now with these kids, just one fragment, one statement that is straight to the point, it may give the better results. You're not confronting. See, I come from, I come from that lecture talk. Like you say, uh, I need to talk to you. Uh, three hours. <laughs> three hours <laughs> three didn't hours. mean nothing, but you, did, you, did you ever hear a chancleta coming into you? You know what that is? <laughs> no. It's the sandal that we just like <laughs> fly right on you, and that then, my, my, grandma's never failed. Mama never failed. That that's illegal today. See, no, we, I, my era, we got we got a switch. You got a switch. You got a switch. You get brooms. You get you get chancleta too. No, yeah, you we got chancleta too. But you know, me and my brother, we were, my brother and I, we were really good kids. Yeah. I think that my mother only flung a few times at us, <laughs> and that's because we were actually fighting on each other. Yeah, yeah. We never hurt each other ever. Mm. But that's it. I mean, these limits that we laugh about right now, it's something that some parents of today's society, whether it be drugs, alcohol, uh, and you know, neglect, and all this kind of emotional abuse, and also the fact that they get distracted from taking care of their responsibility and the only blessing their children. And the children develop and they earn, I mean, they learn everything online. Yeah. So it's hard, yeah. different eras. They see too much and they get confused very much today. So you gotta navigate them where you wanna. You have to navigate with them. I know where I am. I know where I've been. I know where I'm going, and they need to find themselves. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Before we get out of here, you gotta show me your collection. Let's uh, go. You know, hey, I'm ready to see. What, it. what, 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 what are you looking for? What's your preference? Are you European? Are you American? Uh, are you Euro Asian type? I'm, I'm a European guy. European guy. Yeah, there you go. So we yeah. got a, a few Euro cars in here. Let's go. Yeah. Let's take a look. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's go. Let's do this. It. <laughs> So you say you're more into European automobiles, right? Yeah. yeah so we have a few Euro. Uh, I like Italian cars. You like Italian cars? Yeah. I, I like them I'm, too. <laughs> so here I have the uh, 488 mm. uh, GTB, and it's been completely modified uh, by Bavarian Motorsports. It's got like 900 horsepower to the wheel. Wow. So we had to put 22, 21s. 900. Uh, 900 horsepower. This is probably one of my fastest cars. Uh, it's been dropped to the floor, full exhaust, full intakes. Uh, full computer chip. I mean, you can put this car at 1,200 horsepower if you wanted to. If you change the turbo, but for what? <laughs> how you know fast I mean? can you? How, how you fast can you go? But right. it's about that knowing that you have it. Wow. And then in the back we have these two that are part of my my collection. It's a Ferrari 360 Modena. It's a year 2000, so this car is 22 years old, but it's being kept immaculate, immaculate. Man, the only thing that it we looks didn't brand lose, new to me. It looks brand new, but this is the way you want to keep your stuff. You wow. know. The one on the top is a 430. It's a special edition uh, anniversary. So it has all the stitching and all the carbon fiber and everything else inside. It's a six year anniversary. You know, I'm a car guy. So this is like, this is like yeah. a candy shop for me. Yeah, candy shop, there you go. <laughs> and you know, like I told you, physical, it's just like working out like you like it. You yeah, gotta I stay love fit. It. Yeah. Mental health, physical fitness, it's important for the long run. Yeah. Limiting dangers, obviously. Yeah, I, I love this spot right here. Like you gotta, a workout area like but look at look <laughs> at this thing cars. this thing is actually every this every part ridiculous. has been customized that you don't find another car just like this one i mean Man. the aero kit is different i ordered these strauss wheels they're carbon fiber completely 22s man. i don't even want to touch it man. yeah this everything is... else everything has been done exclusively for this car you, know, you may have cars like it but not like this exactly 
So what got you into designing like, you know, I you know, know it, my dad it ain't always, game My dad has always has cars, modified cars. He used, like I told you before, he used to race cars. So it's been part of our culture. Man, I was looking at that when I walked in. I'm like, man, you got like- I said, real racing there. simulator. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. And I practice here and I, I just enjoy it, you know? Wow. This is, this, is, this is the most affordable way to go into racing. You Simple. crash, reset, let's go. <laughs> that's it. No new tires, you just spread reset and let's go. And that's what it is. When you want to chill here, just come have a full body massage, relax. You know, we play pole, we play a little mini football. It's wow, just man. coming here, it's enjoyable. It's always inspiring for whoever comes around that, you know, it's possible. So would you say this is like a man cave? Yeah, they call it a man cave. Yeah. And uh, just call it Dr. G and the family. This is the cinema, so here we watch the games. We don't watch movies here. Right. We watch races and something that is about keeping you dynamic. Right. Man, this is, yeah. I, I love this, man. I got, it's, it's done with good crafting. Yeah, I can see that. Like, whoever designed this, they knew exactly. Yeah, and I'm telling you, the, the name is Marileno, Marileno sits. They, they're, they're, they're out of Brazil, and they imported them. Really? Yeah, we, we imagine you got to create it. They come here, they take picture videos and everything else, and then they design them. Wow. You look like you just got here from the showroom. It's the way it's got to be. <laughs> it's always got to be showroom ready. This is, if anything, you know, sometimes people ask me, what would you keep if you were to keep only one car? It would be the Rolls Royce for sure. Really? It's a V12 twin turbo, 650 horsepower power plant on an almost 5,000 pounds of car, but the luxury, the comfort, the security, it, it, it cannot be beaten. There's nothing, and this one is actually um, a special edition. It's a limo base, limousine base, so it's a little longer. And then right behind, there's two little beautiful, you know, uh, project cards. The one in the middle, the, this is my daughter, Sofia. That's my daughter, Sofia. She graduated from high school. And then she's got the Mazda Miata that she's put all these parts, uh, all the interiors, kind of like girly type and stuff. She has already the, uh, the expanders yeah. and she's waiting to take it to the shop for a turbo, turbo kit installation. Uh, so yeah, yeah, she's got in the blood. You know, you, you learn about what that. you see. <laughs> yeah. And then next to it is like my 1968 Ford Mustang GT. I love that. It's a special edition. I've converted the whole car inside. The engine is performance. Um, it's it's the music, the sound, the light. Everything has yeah. been modified. It's my year of birth, 1968. So I wanted it to have something of a memorial. And I'm always being a Ford Mustang guy, like my dad. Yeah. Wow. Like father, like son. Like father, like son, like 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 son now, and then hopefully like granddaughter too. <laughs> this is what we like, and there always has to be, everything has to be impeccable. Whatever you have in life, whether it be a little car, I mean, remember my Toyota Trasol was always impeccable. From the engine, from the outside, everything was perfect, showroom ready. That's what I like. That's yeah. That's what I like. I go see the same car guy, Sean. Oh yeah. yeah he takes care of my car. Oh, like, Sean is Sean is. Yeah. Sean is on another level. He takes care of all the stuff. He's the one that does all the performance. Wow. Performance, it's because it's meticulous. And he does it until it's done right. Right, right, right. And I live there and my car is predictably well built. Done. Well done. I love that. I love yeah. that, man. Dr. G, man, I appreciate you giving me a tour to your spot, man. This has been a pleasure because hey, you got your own showroom here. Yeah. <laughs> it's showroom ready, man. So I appreciate that a lot, G. <laughs> Thank you for coming, guys.